Hi, my name is Tria Ganguly, Human Resources Intern, and today we're going to be talking about identity covering and its impacts on employees. Have you ever heard of the stereotype that Indian people smell bad? I grew up going to an elementary school with very little people of color. In fact, I was the only Indian kid my entire school until about fourth or fifth grade. I learned about this fact that Indian people smell bad in fourth grade. The moment I heard that stereotype, I promised myself I would work to dispel it. My mom would cook her absolutely delicious Indian foods, beautiful curries, chutneys, samosas, so tasty but so aromatic. And every time she did, I would run upstairs and close the door to my room, making sure no Indian smell would leak onto my clothes. I would douse myself in perfume and wash my clothes and hair if I thought they smelled anything like curry. Instead of enjoying the flavorful foods my mom spent hours cooking, I would spend my time stressing over how I could possibly be judged at school because of my Indian smell. Even today, as much as I love and appreciate her cooking, I find myself trying to avoid the smell because of how I feel Indian cooking has been portrayed in society. This is an example of identity covering and the influence these perceptions have on how we show up in the workplace and social situations. So what is identity covering? According to Dr. Kenji Yoshino, professor at NYU School of Law, covering is defined as the minimizing or downplaying of aspects of our identity in order to fit in at work or social settings. This term was originally introduced by sociologist Irving Goffman. Yoshino defines four types of covering, appearance, affiliation, advocacy avoidance, and association evasion. Appearance covering involves changing parts of your appearance to fit in with your environment. So, for example, if you practice appearance-based covering, you may choose not to wear any of your religious garments in the workplace. Affiliation-based covering involves avoiding behaviors that could be stigmatized or stereotyped towards a certain group. A single mother could avoid talking about her children in fear that she would be seen as less committed to her job. This is the type of covering I found myself doing in my story earlier. Advocacy avoidance refers to a person's inclination to stand up for a group they identify with. Someone practicing this type of covering would remain silent after hearing someone in the workplace speak negatively about a group that they may identify with. Last but not least, we have association evasion. This type of covering involves avoiding contact with people that share your identity. For example, a member of the LGBTQ community may not invite their partner to a work function out of fear of judgment. These forms of identity covering often have negative influences on employees. In Deloitte's survey regarding identity covering in the workplace, it was found that over 61% of employees found themselves covering in at least one of the ways that we discussed. At this point, you must be thinking, we've talked about what identity covering is, but what can we actually do with this information? When I think about it, I come to the realization that this entire concept emphasizes the idea that people should conform to often unspoken norms that are set up in their workplace. Yet doing so strips away the unique differences that make up who you are. Well, what happens when everyone in a work environment walks, talks, and acts the same? This leaves no room for new ideas or diverse creative approaches. In short, the more people shy away from expressing themselves, the less our workplace can grow. And without growth, how is an organization going to change for the better? This leads us to our most important question yet. How can we make our workplaces a more open environment that fosters acceptance and creativity? Building psychological safety is the key. This concept emphasizes that a person can speak up in a team environment without feeling judged, embarrassed, or rejected in response. Working to be more inclusive is another important aspect of creating an open workplace environment. We can do this by incorporating four key ideas into our mindset. Recognize and reflect on your covering experiences. I can definitely say I've spent a lot of time thinking about my experiences with covering, and I use this to make sure that I'm never making others feel the way that I did that day in fourth grade. Look beyond the obvious when working in a team. 
It is so important to recognize everyone's differences and understand that it's only a fraction of their identity. In order to develop a full understanding of the people you are working with, it's crucial that you make connections and take the time to understand their perspective. Increase your self-awareness. Be mindful of how you are expressing your emotions and spend time putting yourself in others' shoes. Question how your words come across to those you work with. Invite voices of people from different backgrounds. By bringing these new perspectives into meetings, you can work to amplify the ideas of people who maybe tend to speak up less. What can this do in shifting the work environment? It invites change. At the end of it all, the most important part of a growing work environment is having the ability to make an impact. None of this is possible unless we all step back and make the decision to be active listeners in the workplace. Identity covering is such a prevalent issue today, and we should all take the steps we can to create an inclusive environment that fosters comfort and creativity. Thanks for watching! Please like this video to help others find it on YouTube, and subscribe to this channel so that you can see more videos to empower you in your professional development.